Can you believe it has been two weeks since I set Pippa off at the start of her Couch to 5K running program? Now, I actually haven't spoken to Pippa, so I'm dying to find how she's getting on, and I bet you guys are too. But this week, we're also going to be having a look at a basic gait analysis and covering effort levels when you're new to running. So there's not much more I can do with that, Pippa. It's time to go and find her. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. I am dying to know how your last two weeks have been. Well, can you, can you give us a quick rundown? Yeah, I, I mean, I did it, which Yay! I think is the biggest achievement. Good. Um, and I think it went well. I mean, yeah, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> and were there any like wobble moments or did you cheat on anything? I didn't cheat technically, <laughs> but um, I, there were a couple of days where I had to do it later than planned. So, I had, so there were a few sessions that were a bit closer together than maybe ideal, but I don't think that's cheating. <laughs> no, I appreciate the honesty. And like I said, there was a day in there in the week that you could kind of like yeah, move it exactly. one way. Um, but anyway, I gather you've kind of recorded some of your runs for us to have a look at. How, how did you find that? Uh, let's just say I'm definitely not a presenter. Oh, um, come on. I was very self-conscious, like holding the GoPro. <laughs> and I definitely ran a lot faster than I should have done because I thought if people see me running with a GoPro, I need to look like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Were you talking whilst running fast? Yes, yes. Oh, so you're still so, being conversational. This wow. sounds like... Okay, I think, we, I think we need to take a look anyway. Okay, here we go, session two. Uh, first one without Heather's supervision. Um, and I've already made a mistake by deciding to go out at the hottest time of the day. Um, so good luck to me. And I know that GCN, you love some hot tech. So I've got an exclusive for you here. Um, I wasn't sure how I'd keep track of the splits and how and when I walk and when I run. Um, so I've done something really high tech and I've written it on my hand. So. You can use that as just, you know, a hot tip there. Um, but here we go, I'm gonna head off. <sighs> okay, I'm back. I've just finished run three of six. <sighs> and I don't know whether it's because of the heat, or I'm just running faster, or I'm even more unfit, but yeah, I'm really out of breath. Whew. Okay, so we finished our run and actually went okay. But uh, she does run a lot faster than I do. Okay, so I'm back from my last run of week two. So I've done the two weeks and I'm still here. Uh, I don't really think it's gotten much easier or like I've improved yet because I don't think there's really enough time to tell. Uh, but mentally, I feel like I'm enjoying it a bit more. It's a bit easier mentally because once I've done the first one of that week, the, the next two, it's sort of, well, I've already done it, so I know what I'm doing. Um, so that's good. I'm a bit nervous about what Heather has in store for week three and four though, because I'm sure it's gonna ramp up a gear. So please be kind, Heather. Okay, so just to refresh everyone, Pepper, you've just completed your first two weeks and your last week was a five minute walk, then nine second jog, two minutes, walk six times through. And um, before you went off, you were worried about effort levels and kind of how to know how hard it was. How hard was it? Can you give it just like a scale out of 10 on how hard you were working? Yeah, I'd say the first two were definitely the hardest, like the first two runs. And I was trying to find my pace, I guess. So I'd say maybe a seven out of 10, but then I sort of relaxed into it. And then I think it went down to maybe a six for the rest of it. And then by the end, I was kind of comfortable and felt like I knew what I was doing. Cool. It's a hard one and I don't think it's going to just be Pippa that's struggling with keeping those effort levels down. I did say it needs to be conversational. Now, a 7 or 8 out of 10 
is a little bit high. Yes, it's okay to walk on those bits, but ideally you want to save the walking just for the walking sections. So avoid any hills to make it as easy as possible. And as time goes on, that effort level should come down and hopefully you'll be able to jog at around a four or five out of 10 by the end of the program. And if you do have a watch like Pippa that's going to actually give you your heart rate, you can use that as a little bit of a guidance. I don't want you to get sort of fixated on watching your heart rate. And if you're doing intervals especially, there's a bit of a lag so if you do a running interval your heart rate's not actually going to catch up possibly until you're even back on the walk but as we start to build up and do longer intervals then you can use it just to see what zone you're working in and if you're doing the same stretch on several runs and you're running it at the same pace hopefully you'll start to notice your heart rate average drop over that time and some watches also will show you your heart rate zone and basically you just want to stay out of the red ideally in the green or the blue zone Okay, that's enough talking for now. I want to actually head out for a run with Pippa and it's time to start week three with the following session. So it's a five minute walking warm up again and then the main set consists of 90 seconds jog followed by 90 seconds walk, then a three minute jog followed by a three minute walk twice through, finished up with a five minute walk warm down. And that is the first three sessions for week three and we'll cover week four later on. But remember, it's in the PDF as well. Okay, so we might as well get going. I'm coming with you, Pippa. Okay. <laughs> no getting out <laughs> no of this pressure. One. But we have, um, I just thought my watch actually, we've got um, five minutes warm up of walk, but if we can kind of like, you know, walk at an actual warm up pace, not, okay. not like we're just not kind of stroll. having it. We can still chat, obviously. <laughs> but, um, have you um, been doing your runs on your own or have you found anyone to do them with? Yeah, at, on my own at the moment. Um, it seems everyone I know who runs is much better at running than me. So maybe towards the end, they might have an interest in it, but so far just solo. Okay, I think you should even like try and rope somebody in who, just because they're quicker, they can then just do it at your pace and it doesn't matter if it's easy for them. That's is there someone true. that you could maybe Yes, I maybe make my husband do it. I bet he'll <laughs> love that. <laughs> yes, you can vlog that one for us. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this next run, I'm not gonna come with you because I'm gonna watch um, and do a bit of gait analysis. So don't, don't think about me, just run like you are normally and we'll see if we can spot anything. Okay. All right, we're actually gonna cheat because I am gonna get the camera to film Pippa in slow motion. So I can watch it back, but I can also watch it with Pippa to show her what she's doing. So Pippa, do you look like you thought you would look? Um, I don't know. I'm a lot bouncier than I thought I was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing because you've got the energy and you've got a good posture. There's still a little bit of work we can do on it, but the bounciness, I feel I want to convert that energy into a bit more length with your stride. So it's very, yeah, it's very up and down. You've got obviously the power, but I somehow want to make that longer. So the stride rate is great. Um, and that's something that often like new runners struggle with of doing like too long a slower stride. Right. And I feel it's much easier to lengthen a stride than it is to speed it up. So, so more gliding. So yeah, I want you to actually try to think that at the moment you're very upright like this. So I want you to try and have a whole body lean. And this is a lot of, a lot of people have make this mistake. So that it's a lean from the ankles right to the head so that you're slightly like this. And I think that will naturally lengthen your stride and give you a bit more drive at the back right um we might maybe in the next um, time we meet up do a bit of like a few drills to help with that but for now i just want you to sort of try to think of still keeping your shoulders nice and upright because that's really important for breathing um and i mean i've only seen a short bit and i know you're on camera but i think sometimes from what you've said it sounds like you you creep yeah. up with your shoulders a little bit and again it's another thing that new runners do so always trying to keep those shoulders down while still using your arms because that's another thing by driving a bit more with your arms yeah they're good they come forwards and backwards like there's no lateral movement which yeah. is great but if you drive a bit like bigger arm movements will actually help the stride because okay. the body is connected you know your yeah. arms move in time with your legs and does it matter if your hands are straight or clenched or how what are your it, hands yeah that's, okay. that's hands. yeah it's, it's a really a really good question and yours i think are just quite relaxed hence why i didn't sort of notice that as a major thing but it's, it's about being relaxed. So if relaxed for you is this, or if relaxed for you is that, 
that doesn't matter okay. it's it's the chain and the effect it has on your shoulders so if your hands are just and if you find carrying something helps relax that's another thing you can do but you want the forwards backwards motion because they're all linked with the body if as okay. soon as you're going across you're twisting your whole body and you're wasting right. energy that way so i think um yeah your breathing looks looks good but the more you relax the better that will be Perfect. um your stride rate is good but i want it slightly just a little bit extended and that links in with a posture of just a slight lean not a bend at the hips <laughs> just a lean of the whole body forwards okay so hopefully that's not too much to yeah to take on i in can one do day. that i can do it cool <laughs> All right, you've seen week three, so here's what's in store for week four. It's again a five minute walking warm up, and then the main set is three minutes of jogging, just 90 seconds of walking, then we're up to a five minute jog, followed by two and a half minutes of walking, three minutes jog, a minute and a half of walk, and then another five minute jog, followed by a five minute warm down uh, of walking, and that is again the same three sessions repeated throughout the week but it is all in the pdf in the description below all right coming to the end have you got any final thoughts or questions before i leave you for a couple of weeks no i think I, I think i've got it i just need to remember to lean forward be more conversational with my pace and longer strides sounds good well we will be back in two weeks to see how you're getting on again yeah thank you everyone for like just being so lovely and supporting me on this journey and if you're doing it with me then go team and share in the comments how you're getting on too yes awesome and remember do give us a like if you've enjoyed it and don't forget to check out our social media channels and give those a follow too